All right. Well, another data center question. Matthew says, I've been a longtime skeptic of the role NVIDIA will play in, in long-term AI inferencing, but doesn't the Apple intelligence rollout put the clearest dent in that story? Apple is poised to dominate total inferencing volume, and they're planning to do it either locally on device or through their own data centers, all using Apple Silicon. This probably pushes Google to do the same. Perhaps they only host device-specific inferencing for Pixel, or maybe they even create an inferencing service for all of Android. In either case, they'll likely push as much of that to TPUs as possible. Taken together, all this seems like a pretty bad sign for NVIDIA long-term. Am I missing something? Or how big of a blow do you think this could be to NVIDIA? So... A brief digression here from all the Apple discussion. Uh, what do you think this means for NVIDIA? Last well, one thing to understand about Google, and this, this gets at why I wrote the article about modular versus integrated a while ago, all of Google's stuff runs on TPUs. They have NVIDIA GPUs in their cloud, but they are mostly for GCP customers. They did do some training of their models previously using NVIDIA, but they're weighted, like Gemini is all trained on TPUs. It's all served on TPUs. They are they are the Apple of the AI story. They are sort of integrated from sort of top to bottom. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. and you know, that includes local referencing. Like their latest pixels have a TPU component on their chips. I think they've made that available to Samsung and some of their OEM partners as well. So that's already been the case with Google. Where NVIDIA dominates and continues to dominate is in the scalability factor so one way to think about this is is say nvidia versus amd for example right we, we, like so we'll start with the, the 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 use case where nvidia dominates continues to dominate that is training and and the idea is we talk about this compression fit right imagine if you want to take all the world's information and compress it into a model what the memory requirements are to get all that information right. in the model in the first place to actually do this sort of compression. It's astronomical. That's why Jensen Huang talks about building systems, not chips, right? Your standard NVIDIA module is like eight GPUs all interleaved together so they operate as one. We're talking about like a like six figure sort of sort, sort of part here, right? You, you're, you're, you have, that will scale into an entire rack that will scale into an entire data center. And all this sort of scalability is like memory, like memory is king again. Like, like we're back to the seventies. Like, like memory mm -hmm. is, is what really matters. It's why there's been a huge run up in memory stocks sort of over, over the last little bit, because this is clearly sort of going to be an important factor going forward. And so Apple stuff is not going to touch that. Now you get down to inference, something like, 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 like chat GPT. If you want to serve a large model, you need a lot of memory, right? Like, like there's, you know, and so when you think about what is run, what is Apple running in the cloud? They're probably, my estimate is they're running something like a uh, 70 billion parameter model. And there's one running per time on, on sort of an Apple Silicon and the way Apple is doing on an app M2 ultra. That's my guess. The way Apple is doing it is tremendously inefficient. You're connecting to, you basically have your personal computer in the cloud. You're connecting to it doing a handshake to verify that it's an official Apple one and you're whoever you are, there's a key exchange that happens is part of what they're talking about using a Apple Silicon. So you, you reach out to the server in the cloud, do a handshake, send your data. It runs it on this model. My guess is in completely locally in memory. Then it sends it back. Inherent in that is number one, the size of that model is pretty constrained. That's why Apple's, even though they're sending some stuff to the cloud to maybe like, 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 like rewrite a document or tone or something like the, the, they can't actually create, right? Or they mm -hmm. can create if some images, but they're constrained and like the extent to which you can do. So the capabilities are going to be really fundamentally constrained by what they have in, in the cloud. It's a very clever solution to do more sort of non like private sort of inferencing, but it's extremely inefficient. And the time of sort of like connect to that, do the handshake, do that. It's going to be incredibly fast. Like the fact that the reason it works at all is going to be amazing. But it's not going like there's a lot of dead space in there. Whereas when you have these huge cloud models, number one, they're massive, right? So you to fit that all in, you need this this architecture to tie stuff together. Number two, to maximize your your utility, your leverage on your spend, you need to have a gazillion things running through that all the time. You know, those GPUs engage sort of constantly, and there's an entire like, and that's you know. That's why just the infrastructure, the architecture is going to be really fundamentally different to get high bandwidth 
reduce your latency. Like there's a real trade off between size of model and latency. So how do you solve that problem is a really interesting question. Like this right. is where you, and so there's all the, just the long and short of it is no, Apple is not necessarily replacing uh, NVIDIA. What the problem they're solving is very different. Now, is there a bit where chatbots are not replacing search? What they do is very different. Well, yes, they are, but do they chip away at the edges? Is there a little bit less interesting than there would be? To go back earlier in the podcast, in a world where AI is in the center and data goes to the AI, that's a good world for NVIDIA because you're, mm -hmm. the, 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 the primacy of large AI models that really only work on NVIDIA stuff is going to be much larger. You know, yes, can do it AMD, but AMD is, is limited in their ability to scale the way that, that NVIDIA, NVIDIA stuff does. On the other hand, a world where, where AI goes to the model, or sorry, AI goes to the data, that is not as favorable for NVIDIA. So this broader point, the reason is, is not to get into the specifics of Apple data center and TPUs and stuff right. like that. It's this fundamental question of where is the locus? How will of, we of use power. this technology? Right. Yeah. It does, it does the model matter most or does the data matter most in a world where the data matters most that is less favorable to NVIDIA? They still can have the best AI and figure out how to bring it to bear. But the there's also a lot more scope for you can have good enough models on smaller chips mm -hmm. and local inference. This is good for Intel. This is good for AMD as far as their server chips are, their, 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 their CPU chips are concerned. If we mostly use, what Apple's doing is called RAG. They're, they're doing a prompt. They're searching the database, inserting that information back into the prompt, searching, doing the prompt again, and then sending you an answer. If this is all we do is just basically have a verbose nice to talk to AI in front of search, which is what RAG kind of is, that's actually really good for tra traditional CPUs. Like, cause they okay. can do that sort of stuff efficiently. They can just, that, that's AI tacked on to a fundamental sort of way of interacting with data that we understand, as opposed to this all knowing, all encompassing sort of mm -hmm. world. So, um, you know, NVIDIA, you know, th there is a general mismatch Probably in terms of like we've talked about the CapEx spend versus the, you know, the actual money that's being made. There's a real tension here in the vision Apple is putting forth and the vision that seems to undergird NVIDIA's sort of run up in the long run. And so, uh, you know, Matthew is right to sort of put his finger on that, even if maybe some of the specific details are not not as pertinent.